Hey guys, Mike here with Sentry Security Systems Incorporated. In the previous video, we looked at how to add an IP camera. In this video, we're now going to take a look at what we need to do to configure that camera to operate properly. Okay, so we're still on the exact same device management screen as in the previous video. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have my camera highlighted and I'm going to click on Remote Configuration. So a few settings that we can get here from the remote configuration. So we can see the device type. This is one of our cameras at Sentry Security. It's an Axia fixed dome two megapixel camera. We can get the serial number for warranty purposes. Um, all of our cameras in the Axia line come with a five year warranty with the option for just a direct replacement. So if you ever have any issues, we replace the camera for you, no questions asked. Next tab down is the general tab. There's not a lot in here. Um, you can change the device name or the number for the IVMS platform. Really not important that we're going to take a look at that. Time on the camera. It's going to default the, the time zone to Hong Kong. You can change that to your local time zone if you would like to. Um, you can also enable it to sync with Windows. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that you have these cameras on their own dedicated network. That network is not going to have internet access, so this feature is not going to work if you do it that way. What we actually recommend that you do with the cameras is actually remove that, um, remove that from the camera view so that it doesn't show the time at all. Um, it's a little bit old school to have the timestamp on the camera. It's better to let the NVR take take care of all of that. Okay. Next option down, system maintenance. This is going to allow you to reboot the Axia camera, reset it to the default settings, restore it. Um, you can also export your configuration file. So once you've gone through here and we've got everything set up the way that we want it, I can export that configuration file. So I can call it, you know, backyard camera. Here's all my settings for this. What I mentioned with the five year warranty for the direct replacement, say you have an issue with this camera, you put a new camera in, we give you a, a direct replacement. You come in here, you import your configuration file, it's gonna import all of your settings back in, user accounts, passwords, motion detection settings, all that sort of stuff comes right back into the camera, nice and easy for you. Now, we're gonna skip down a couple of bit here to the user tab. The default user account is the administrator account. You can add additional accounts as well in case you want to give somebody direct access to the camera or if you're not using it with the IVMS platform. It's also a good idea to have cameras with different passwords or and very secure passwords just for your own protection. Storage here is going to actually refer to local storage on the camera. You can put in the XEFD 2 megapixel, you can put a micro SD card in there and record directly to that. The next option down is event. This is the one that, that we're mainly concerned about here is the motion detection. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do in here is click to enable motion detection. Okay, and then we can also draw certain areas where we want motion detection. You can, you know, if you have trees moving in the background, that sort of thing, you can, you can remove all of that. Um, you can also go into expert mode, which is going to give you a little bit more advanced features in the in the camera. Okay, I'm going to put this back to normal mode. I'm just going to leave it on the default settings for now. We really don't need to to change anything. It's just a view of a backyard at, uh, on a house. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go back up here and enable the motion detection again, and then click save. Okay. So what this does is with these cameras, the camera itself notifies the VMS platform and says, I've detected motion, you better record whatever's going on right now. The VMS platform itself does not handle the motion detection, so that's why you need to make sure you have enable motion detection checked in here. Okay. There's also a couple of other settings that you need to do in the VMS to get it to record, which we'll cover in a future video. Cameras do, the camera does support video tampering detection video loss, all that sort of thing. And what it'll do is it's gonna send you an email on notification of that. So if somebody spray paints the camera, that sort of thing, you'll get an email notification. If we go down here in the bottom, down to the image tab, this is where we're gonna be able to set things like the video quality. Okay, so I can crank that right up to highest. 
um, I can set my iframe, I can set my resolution, all that, uh, all that sort of stuff, my max bit rate. Okay, so I'll just crank everything right up here, full blast, and then go ahead and save that. Next option down is your image settings. This is going to allow you to adjust your brightness, contrast, and saturation on the camera. Continuing on down, we have video display. This is what I was referring to earlier, where we can actually just go ahead and remove the date. Okay, I'm not a big fan of having it on there. Up to you whether or not you want to. Camera name, I'm gonna set to backyard. Okay, so backyard here refers to the actual label on the camera itself. Where we named backyard earlier when we added the camera is in the actual IVMS software. I like to have them match up. So now that we've saved that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of there. And now I've got my camera added and I've got it configured the way that I would like to. In the next video, we're gonna recover going to cover motion detection recording on the IVMS platform. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button if you like the videos so that you don't miss any of them. Thanks guys.